it's Grandma Roseanne and we're going to make an old-fashioned wonderful wonderful dinner we're going to make a tuna noodle casserole it is one of my very very favorite favorite dishes now I never was able to make it really good and I loved it so much so when I was working I was tired I would run into a grocery store I would pick up Mrs. Stouffer's frozen it honestly you guys only frozen product I ever buy come home and it was satisfying well i devised came up created a recipe that is better than mrs stouffer's so i'm going to teach you how to make it it's going to be a secret it's just you and me don't tell anybody else okay all right so we're going to start out making a white sauce and in the pan here well actually no i'm sorry we're going to start out with our vegetables first so i have got about a tablespoon of butter in here that is already melted and I'm going to put in one cup of onion and one cup of celery. And we're going to let those kind of cook through. We don't want a lot of butter on them. We just want them kind of coated and they're not going to cook all the way through. That's not what we're looking for. We just want the celery tender and we want that bite out of the onion. And, and see this great big old piece that got in there? He doesn't belong in there, that is totally wrong. So, he goes over here in the garbage. Okay, this will take just a few minutes. This is a dinner that comes together so fast, you guys. So, if you're coming home from work, you've got hungry kids, or you're starving, whatever that is, this you can put, you can pull this together in like 15 minutes. That's how quick it is. As this is cooking down, we're going to add mushrooms. If you have an aversion to mushrooms, just skip it. If you love them like cameraman and I do, go overboard. We go overboard. So I'm just going to pop those in. That little chime is just my oven telling us that it is to 350 degrees because we're going to need that. I think it's always important to really take a look at what you're cooking there. I think this is a little bit light. I'm putting in another tablespoon of butter. So when you're looking at something you're cooking, let your, let your vision and your common sense take over. You know, um, depends a lot on how much moisture was in the onions, how much moisture was in the mushrooms. What is it extracting? What is it giving back? Because mushrooms will, they, they will extract liquid and then they'll dry up again. Well, in that process, maybe you didn't have enough butter. So, I added just another tablespoon. <clears throat> the recipe I'm making here is really pretty large. You feel free to cut it down. If you've got a really large family, you can certainly increase it, but um, this is enough that it's going to feed cameraman and I, and I intend to freeze a lot of it. I do a lot of canning, but because pasta goes into this, you really can't can it. So I'm just gonna bag it up and freeze it. And then on those nights that I don't wanna cook and he still feels he, he should eat, <laughs> then we've got something to feed him. Okay, I think we're just about there. Take a look at that. Now what I'm going to do is remove all the veggies. because we are going to make a roux or we're going to make a white sauce or we're going to make a bechamel and it's all the same thing you know a roux and bechamel is just roux is just equal portions of flour and uh, butter and milk now do not under any circumstances wash out this pan you have got so many flavors in that pan that are gonna make such a huge difference in your finished product. Uh, so I have four tablespoons of butter in here, and to that, I, as it's melting, I'm going to add four tablespoons of flour. And then we are just going to mix it in. And you can dump the flour in all at one time. That doesn't make a difference but I want you to take a look at this. 
because if you haven't done this before, you're gonna get scared right now and go, oh no, what happened, what happened? This is normal, this is normal. Now what we're going to do is we have to cook the flour because you don't want that flour taste. Hi, one of my friends just walked in the door. You don't want to uh, have that raw flour taste in there. So you want to cook that flour out, which is exactly what we're doing. All right, I want you to take a look at this because this is how it should be looking. You've done a good job cooking that flour out. All right, now we're going to start with two cups of milk. Do not pour it all in at one time. You'll lose control of your sauce. So a little bit and get that incorporated. Just like this. Looks pretty yucky, doesn't it? I will guarantee you it will be fantastic. Okay. And a little bit more. A little bit more. Now I will caution you through this part of it. You do want to stay close to your range because it can go south on you <laughs> real fast. There. And when you do it this way, no lumps. Come and look. No lumps. And if you look in there and say, no, Roseanne, I see lumps. No, you don't. You see little bits of mushroom, little bits of celery. That's what you see. But no lumps. This is a perfect sauce right now. Now we're going to allow it to thicken. Nice and slow. This is like on a medium high heat. And that's going to be plenty enough for it. Now we're going to add a little bit of seasoning. I have one teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper. Now, as this thickens and it gets going here, <clears throat> I want you to taste it and see if it's enough for you. If you need to add a little bit more, that's fine, but do it in small increments because once you oversalt something, you know, you pretty much ruined it. Come here, because I want you to take a look at this. This is where it is starting. See that? That tiny little ribbon, right? That little, little piece of silver you can see there, the bottom of the pan, that's where it's starting. And that's what you're going to look for, to know how thick your sauce is getting. And I'll show you at the consistency that we like it. Now, if you like a thicker sauce, you just let it cook a little bit longer. If you like a thinner sauce, obviously you cook it less. But I like just the sauce that is just just the right, not too thin, not too thick. See how it's starting to get little ribbons there? Can you see that? We're getting about to where we need to get. So as you're doing yours, if you haven't done this before, as you're doing yours and it's just not thickening, don't do anything. Just give it a little bit of time because if you're using the right proportions that I gave you, it will thicken, it will. Now this is where I want to do a little bit of a taste test for seasoning. That is excellent, really good. Okay, now it's time. Take a look at this so I can show you here. Do you see how much you have in separation and how that ribbon stays across. All right, now we're going to add all of the vegetables back in. Just like that. I'm gonna turn the heat down. I have frozen peas and I didn't defrost them. Just put them in because they're gonna cook down just fine. And I'm adding um, nine ounces of tuna.
this is a recipe that you pretty much can just custom design it to your likes. If you hate peas, don't put them in. If you love mushrooms, put more in. So easy. And now all we are doing is just kind of warming that tuna, separating that tuna out so that it's evenly distributed. I guess the main thing here is you just want to not have big chunks of tuna. You want to be able to kind of break it up a little bit. And whether you have tuna that has been packed in oil or water, I think that is just your personal preference. I've made it with both. I like it equally well. It's just whichever one is at my counter, easiest for me to reach for. Now we add the noodles. And again, I'm not giving you portions because really it's just eyeball it. Does your family like noodles a lot? Are they not too crazy about noodles? Whatever it is, that's what you want to include. All right, now we're just gonna take a quick taste and make sure our seasoning is correct. Oh my God, so delicious. All right, next step, we're going to, you could eat it right now, it would be just fine. But we're gonna put it in the oven at 350 for Oh, I don't know, maybe just 15 minutes. And all that really does is just allows everybody in the pan to get acquainted and become friends. That's I'm just going to top it with some chow mein noodles. Now we pop it in the oven, it's gonna be there just for 15 minutes. And then it's dinner time. Okay, this is it. This is the grand finale. Oh, I cannot wait. I love this so much, you guys. And after it comes out, you want to let it sit for just a little bit so that it's not steaming, steaming, steaming hot and you're going to burn your mouth, okay? I'm probably going to burn my mouth. No, I'm gonna wait. It's really steaming hot. So give me just a minute here. How many times do you watch people on YouTube and they, <laughs> they're eating something and you know they're dying because it's really hot. It happens a lot. Okay. Absolutely. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. I think you will enjoy it. Super easy. So as you are enjoying this wonderful, wonderful meal, remember to subscribe. Remember that the ingredients will be below and especially in the green ingredients. Remember you can add and take away and however much you want. I just gave you the basics. The only thing you really have to be careful of is the ingredients for the white sauce. You do want to be careful, but after that, it's entirely up to you. So with that being said, hit subscribe, hit the bell. Instructions will be below and have a wonderful, wonderful dinner as we are going to right now. Thank you. Bye.